So I have the Motorola Backflip. And I have the Kyocera Echo. We're gonna do a quick power on test. So yours cut on a good deal quicker than mine. Yeah. A uh, good 30 seconds quicker than mine. So my Motorola Backflip has a 3.1 inch screen, a five megapixel camera, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a 1400 milliamp battery. The Echo has a 3.5 inch screen, a five megapixel camera, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a 1370 milliamp hour battery. One of the biggest features with both of these phones is the hinge. Mine has the keypad on the back, so it folds out like this, pretty keyboard mode. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of this because I'm worried about accidentally pressing buttons on the back while I'm using it. Also, there's the issue of the keypad not being fully protected. Uh, there's not really a comfortable case that you can get for a phone like this. I'm just gonna show you the hinge on this phone because it's not to hide a keyboard, but it's to hide another screen. It's like a spring assisted hinge that is off balance on the phone. So if you were to just push up like that, it kind of flips up and it would go into this, this wider version of the phone. Like a tablet. Yeah, like a tablet. Something really annoying about this is that it has this bezel from the top screen in the, right in the middle. So everything is separated. So what's interesting about that phone too is it's very ahead of the time because we're seeing a lot of phones have this folding out tablet feature as well. Yeah. Like so, with the Galaxy Fold. Yeah, so this yeah. would be kind of like a father to that phone. Yeah, it's a precursor. Both of these phones run on a version of Android. This one runs on Android 2.3 and yours has Motorola Blur. Which is like which a is proprietary. Like, it's like their own custom version of Android at the yeah. time. So sifting through the UI on both of these phones is about equally as, as chuggy, kind yeah. of like sifting through molasses, but that just kind of goes with the territory of like these early versions of smartphones. You're not going to have this super snappy UI, especially early Android. Yeah, the, the, the operating system was way too advanced for how powerful the phones could be at the time. This phone is really heavy and really thick. <laughs> Has a lot of metal on it for the hinge. The hinge is not very attractive at all. It it makes the phone really thick, kind of like the uh, the Samsung Fold phone. How that phone is kind of like not as wide. One thing I really do like about this phone is how compact the size of it is. I mean, I have pretty big hands, but it does fit pretty comfortably. That is something that works in its favor when you're just holding it. But whenever you're trying to type on this small keyboard, and I guess you would call this portrait mode, uh, you have to wonder why you would not just do this <laughs> instead because this is way smoother which i guess kind of leads us into uh the typing the keyboards that both of our phones have so what do you think about yours it's really slow um since the operating system isn't as smooth as you would want it to be typing on it is pretty choppy i would liken this keyboard to a phone that we reviewed a while back uh, the samsung gravity it's got the same kind of feel to it as far as pressing the keys. My only complaint with it is that it has this flat sort of design to it. So if you're in an area with low lighting, it's kind of hard to see where the keys begin and end. But I imagine if you got used to typing on this keyboard, it would, it would just come like second nature. Well, it probably has a backlight too. It does, but only for the keys. So you see like the separation between oh, the keys, okay. it's okay. not. The battery on this phone is pretty bad. It, it is smaller than his phone and having two screens just drains it very fast. So for the size of the phone, the battery in it is pretty small, but it came with a battery pack out of the box and it actually has a second battery that you can take with you. And you can also charge the phone directly from this using these ports on the side. And then you can even charge someone else's phone with it as well. That's actually a really cool thing to include with the phone because usually this is something, some sort of accessory that they would want you to buy to go alongside it. Yeah, as you're picking up the phone. Both of these phones have uh, five megapixel cameras. Mine is actually on the back with the keypad, which is a, an interesting choice. Now, this Mine one's doesn't... camera looks pretty nice. It's in like this rounded area right here with, uh, with like a little bit of silver. And mine's like right next to the uppercase key. <laughs> yeah. So these should have pretty similar outcomes. We're gonna take the exact same pictures uh, with both of these and see how they turn out. 
if you had this phone back in the day, would you have fond memories of it? Or yeah. Would you be probably? Yeah. I uh, I would probably have fond memories of that phone, but not this phone. Yeah. I feel like this phone would die too fast, and I don't see this thing being incredibly durable. Yeah. You know what I mean? With yeah, it, the thing about the transformation of that phone is the first couple of steps feel like you're breaking it. <laughs> yeah. The flip is cool, but everything after that feels kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, it's clunky. Yeah. This is a very good, like, <laughs> you're it's, in seventh grade and this is your first smartphone, you know? It's it's a fast motion. And like with other phones that have a hinge with like a QWERTY board on it, the, the screen is usually behind the keyboard, but your screen is in front of it. Yeah. So it kind of comes towards you a little bit. a large keyboard and there's motor blur streaming your posts texts and emails all in one easy place motorola backflip it's not rocket science it's people science stay you're watching tv and the sky says it's